then everything in this world i think has some kind of uh rhythm in it so i think that's the reason why he named me rhythm in the first scenario <laughs> straight up rhythm is little more important than melody in music overall because uh we do make mistakes in terms of melody and that's human error that's fine but uh if you're not in rhythm you're not a part of anything it works i mean and i i feel so comfortable playing with uh drummers and uh, other rhythmic instruments it's it's fun to interchange those like things and have fun with it and then again come back to some and have fun and feel good about it yeah <laughs> come come on some <laughs> correct 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 What's up, Rhythm? Thank you so much for joining in. It's it's such a pleasure to be interacting with you. So good to see you after a long time. How is it going? Thank you. Uh, I'm doing great, and it's it's amazing to finally uh, get the time and somehow manage everything uh, inwards and upwards uh, and make it happen. So happy to be here, <laughs> and life is going good. um just trying to make it better every moment wonderful 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 thank you thank you so much for joining in uh, you know uh, you know for all your all your fans and followers um of course which includes me as well you know we have all been kind of you know watching you smash the big screen take big stages and collaborate with the who's who of the music industry uh, new releases new sounds new soundscapes you know your energy your stage presence it's absolutely infectious and uh, i kind of want to know it from you that basically what's the whole rhythm show story well i really appreciate uh, your sweet words and uh, i think it's because of my parents who uh, are completely into music uh, i belong from a musical family and my dad mr nepal show he is like a very well respected senior uh, session musician and also um, like i don't know how many thousand gigs he did with let's say ardi bomo asha bhosle uh, i mean all the uh, you know legends so coming from that family things were quite settled already that i didn't have to choose something uh, which was not music so it just happened and I had guitars everywhere. I had uh, other instruments which I used to play with as a toy when I was a kid. So I think it started from there, and um, I fell in love with it at some point, um, and then, yeah, no going back. So right, that's how it started, right. and then, you know, um, you want to get into different genres. You want to start learning different things which interests you. Absolutely. And. Uh, Yeah, just the ego to learn more and every day, and to feel that you can be so much better, yeah. is something uh, which makes me or which keeps me motivated to keep doing what I do, and with passion and with love. So that's that's what it is. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I mean, uh, you know, we also also came to know about the very fact that you started with tabla at the very early age, and uh, the very fact that you. you had you know thrown so much importance into being trained in intricate rhythms and patterns uh, you know how did how did all of that shape up for you so my dad uh, thinks and i think he's quite right about it which is uh, rhythm is little more important than melody in music overall yeah because uh, we do make mistakes in terms of melody and that's human error that's fine but uh, if you're not in rhythm you are not a part of anything i mean as as another example is like even our heartbeat has like a bpm beats per minute Absolutely. so you know it flows and everything in this world i think has some kind of uh rhythm in it and we feel nice when we are in rhythm and you know so i think that's the reason why he named me rhythm in the first scenario <laughs> straight yes, up yes. and then um he wanted me to learn some rhythm instrument which uh, was tabla at that point of time which definitely makes so much sense because it has so many different type of uh, uh intricacy and uh 
calculations and it really makes you smart in Absolutely. terms of a musician to think beyond just like a 4 4 or 6 8 or anything as such and all the subdivisions and everything so and my dad being one of the congo players uh, from the early childhood so he really understood the re- importance of rhythm before he also want before he even wanted me to take any melody instrument so nice, i think nice. that's why i started with uh, tabla and simultaneously did guitars it's not that i started tabla did it for few years and then because i had guitars everywhere lying uh, guitar was just like a thing which was already there but then it was tabla which was like yeah. you know you got to learn it and you got to practice every two hours every day so that's that's how it happened you know you you've put it very beautifully you know that it kind of makes you smart it makes you intelligent when you learn something like tabla and uh, i i totally relate with you on that because you know i was trained in mridangam as well at a very early age and uh, it it gives you that right kind of push to be on time stay on time i see it in your music as well uh, you know where you go about the groupings um, kono calls with you know various different artists and um, it's it's you know a great great salute to such music and such artists so that's absolutely great yeah i mean it definitely makes you much uh, easier to collaborate with any other musician i mean and i collaborate a lot with drummers yeah and they find it very easy to play with me as well um, absolutely because we kind of connect with the same language first and then i play melodically i influence all these other things so that that works i mean and i i feel so comfortable playing with uh drummers and uh, other rhythmic instruments like whoever the artists are like it's it's fun to interchange those like things and have fun with it and then again come back to some and have fun and feel good about it yeah come come on some <laughs> correct 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 you do whatever what you know where you are that's, right that's spot on spot on uh, you know uh, kind of you know one thing that also made me very fascinated uh, generally when i hear like when people come from musical families uh, you know i i i wanted to know from you that you know what kind of clarity in life or you know the sortedness in life do you get that you know there's nothing else that i'm doing other than music it's just music for life uh you know be it the clarity in life or the guidance and advices from the right people at a very tender age uh how do you look at coming from a musical family how does it benefit you uh I'm I'm sure you would have lived through it so if you could share with us uh for me it was never never about uh surviving with music but it was uh music only like you know what we get like so many questions from so many people that do you think uh being a musician you can survive this new generation where everything is electronic music or uh musicians don't get don't get enough job or what not Uh it wasn't the question for me ever. I mean, I just wanted to do music. So I never had those other complications in my life that will I be able to make enough money uh to survive and and all the other you know difficult life situation questions. So it was easy for me that way because I knew this is all I can do and this is what I'll do and uh whatever happens. But do it with passion and not only to make money. I mean money comes eventually you do good work you practice and people recognize that and they call you because you are very uh dedicated to it and they they see that you know if you are only dedicated about uh the other aspect of why to do music they also see that so right they call you for different reasons then but when it's when it comes to music they call you with full faith spot on spot so on. I think if you are really indulged to it uh you'll get enough job and you'll never have to worry about anything as such absolutely absolutely you know you 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 also talk, you also spoken about you know the importance of having a practice routine and stuff you know how have you gone about kind of crafting your art you know staying fresh and new with your music vocabulary um well uh dad being super strict um i had to play guitars for like at least i actually was playing guitars 
all day long yeah and tabla was like very strict thing for me so it was like 2 hours every day kind of space and uh, then i had school and homeworks and what not but then it was uh, music mostly so my dad used to take care of the music side of it mom used to just get me done with all the homeworks and everything so that <laughs> i don't get punishment in schools and all <laughs> but other than that i yeah. think uh, it was um, music throughout and music doesn't only mean that you have to sit with an instrument and just play but a lot to do with uh, listening observing uh, discussing uh, absolutely yeah so i think that was on throughout so my routine was like if i was sleeping for like 9 hours or 8 hours i think and let's say 6 hours of school other than that it was mostly music so that was the routine for the longest time uh other than that i think now things have changed a little bit um i don't get enough time to really sit and practice but i do practice uh in a way where let's say if i'm going for a session i do a little bit of warm up and then if i'm doing two three sessions a day so you know i'm playing in any ways enough to kind of keep me going but definitely i mean i i understand that this lockdown was uh, harsh for a lot of people and even for me in in some ways but then i needed some time for myself a little bit of an isolation um after being in bombay for 5 years where i was super busy and everything amazing time but then needed to kind of uh go back and just do the basic uh riyaz i mean if you may call it absolutely um and then i did that and i kind of feel happy that this whole year i was in calcutta and i was playing a lot and doing my own production and doing my own album songs and everything so you know uh, trying to keep a balance of both the worlds work and uh something which i like to do and play absolutely yeah. absolutely you know i mean i mean our our audience you know we all are absolutely thrilled to you know if you could just you know strum a few lines a few melodies um we all we all would be absolutely glad to see you play something i don't know I, i'll just try something random it's a wonderful guitar it's by bm espania uh, made in spain and then i had it since 2004 or something but then what i did uh with it was take off all the frets so it is a fretless instrument now wow this is wow. how it sounds That's so good. That's so amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um yeah. I was having fun last night with this as well. Going to track some new stuff with this. Nice. I I hope you got it on the on the mobile phone. Oh, I did. I did. Yeah. It's recording. I've also come come across this thing that you have a collection of more than 45 plus guitars. what do you do with all of them and how do you how do you kind of kind of play all of it um well every single guitar i own or i have um sound different even if it's the same model made in the same year and even if it has the same specs uh it's just it's a thing which is built by hand so it'll sound different wow and that's what it is all about and i i just i i love uh collecting more gear and um i'm i'm really thrilled and happy and honored to be part of some of the companies so i use yamaha guitars for electric uh and i use kepma guitars for acoustic and i have lenny endorsements which have some amazing amps and dedario strings and akg mics so yeah and lot many other uh companies who trusted me so i'm really thankful to them uh so i have gotten lot of guitars from the company itself so that's amazing uh but other than that i did buy a lot of them and uh, it's just that i like to i mean 
if I can show, I mean, in this angle, you can see some of the guitars here. Maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14, 15, right here. And then I have another collection right here. Then, like, at least 8 or 9 of them in the car, uh, which I carry every day for sessions because I don't want to carry on the 13th floor again and take it down. So that's always there. Yeah. And some there in the, in the dining space. So yeah, guitars everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and it's also not only about getting free products, to be honest. It's a lot about relationship which you have with the company. And it's mutual, you know. So I think from the very beginning, I had that um, with all the companies I endorse. And I'm still trying to keep as a long-term relationship I can with them. Because uh, the instruments are great, of course. And they listen to the artists. So um, that's that's been awesome, and I mean, again, you just gotta do what you love to do, and there'll be people who'll find it out. And it's much easier these days because of the social media. Because back in the days, it wasn't there, so you have to absolutely be very big to get a call from a company or whatnot. But now, with you putting up videos and getting viral in seconds, um, you know the chances are way more. So just do it with love. I mean, I'm sure if you love something, you'll get it. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I mean, um, you know, as I, as I mentioned it in the very beginning that you know you've collaborated with the who's who of the music industry, and I I, I sincerely mean like you know people like A R Rahman, Zakir Hussain ji, Jargo Borlai, um, Ranjit Bairod ji, uh, Louis Bankser, and so many other such people, such legendary artists. Uh, I I want you to share it with us. Share it with us. You know your individual experience of how all of this happened. Yeah, I mean with um, with AR, it was. I remember I was in Calcutta and I went to watch the Fourth Dimension gig. So it was um, Ranjit Barot on drums, uh, John Clotin on guitars, uh, Mbappe on bass, and um gary husband on keys so that was the gig which i went to watch and i remember meeting a good friend of mine sambit actually asked me to be there even in the sound check so i was i was a tech for john cloplin for that that gig which was amazing to see his rig be on stage be with him and uh, i remember after the gig um ranjit uncle was like i i watched you before and uh, i remember mohini sent me some of your stuff and it's amazing do you want to play over some of uh, my stuff as well. Uh, I'm like, definitely. <laughs> yeah, it'll be it'll be an honor. So he, I remember he called me in like a couple of days. Um, so when are you coming to Bombay? And we had a chat about how we can do it. And in like 10 minutes or so, uh, he called me. Okay, uh, do you want to play with AR? I'm like, <laughs> okay. I'm like, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> what a news. Definitely. So that's when I actually moved to Bombay, which was around five years back and started my career with A.R. Rahman um, and I remember starting started touring with him and the first time I met him uh, he heard me in the sound check in the in the rehearsals and me playing some of the songs and everything and he came up to me he shook my hand and the first thing was welcome to the family so that felt great you know I mean we all know that he's he doesn't talk much um, only talks when when necessary and when needed so yeah that was the start and then we had a great time i i toured with them for like a year almost so um good fun good fun to play with um such amazing band and in all stadium gigs with like you can't count how many <laughs> in the audience that space so that happened and then yeah uh, so ranjit uncle i mean it the relationship started from there uh, with uh, let's say Anton Davidian's bass from Russia, Gergo Borloi from uh, Hungary. I mean, we were doing a, and also I mean, uh, one of my favorite musician, Anna Rakita from Russia. She's a violinist, and we all kind of met together uh, in a project called Wind of Change in Dhaka. We were uh, rearranging a lot of Bengali songs and a lot of traditional songs. Wow! And it's an amazing project by. Uh, a great human being called Tapush who wants to uh, really get the best musicians from all over the world and uh, rearrange Bengali songs. 
with all the intellectual heads writing all the different chord progressions and like amazing parts and huge concerts uh we did like some eight concerts in uh eight uh cricket stadiums they have in bangladesh and like millions of people amazing amazing stuff so yeah we did that so that's where i met them and then um we are still collaborating on a lot of stuff me and anna are coming with uh, an album together and uh, yeah gergo and anton's playing on some of my songs uh, on my album and then yeah i mean i think it's lot to do with the friendship and that's how you connect and from there you know the music becomes a part of it not only like okay, yeah. just collaborate zakir ji yeah, was okay. actually 50th uh, birthday of uh, shankar uncle uh, shankar mahadev so Absolutely. i was there and uh, we were celebrating his birthday in karjot in his place and uh, that's where we met and that was the first time i played with zakir ji and he was actually playing drums that day <laughs> so it was amazing uh, collaborating with him and then i am kind of playing some tihai on guitar and he's actually doing that same thing on drums which is amazing and then uh, right after we jammed um, on stage we had loy mandon sir we had purban chatterji a uh, very dear friend and brother um then i mean some some amazing people on stage uh, shankar uncle of course um and then right after the jam i remember zakir ji telling me acha i hope i didn't mess it up you know i like what are you even saying it's such an honor to just share stage with you uh, i mean i didn't play tabla right so i'm like <laughs> come on i mean so you know that was the conversation we had and then Yeah, I'm looking forward to more stuff. Definitely, um, the upcoming years or whatnot. So yeah, I mean, some of the people I really adore and have a lot of admiration and get inspiration from. So it's it's amazing to really play with them and share that energy more than anything. Absolutely. And how humble they are when it comes to real music, you know. All these musicians. I mean, when it's and real music in the sense, the music they love to play. uh not what they are asked to play so i mean music isn't bad or good or anything but sometimes you know you know that this is something i really want to do and play and feel happy about so when it comes to that genre of music people are like down to earth to some other extent and humble and just want to serve to that uh particular thing they are doing or the genre they are playing so that's the truest and the uh I I don't know how to explain it but that's the feeling which is so natural and so true it it just feels that you're connected to that other soul so much that you don't have to talk you just know you look at look at them you know where you're going or it can be a different tempo it can be a different key you already see that happening you know even b- without talking spot on so, spot on yeah sharing that kind of a moment is something priceless very precious So I enjoy having that moments a lot with uh, some of my uh, idols. I mean that way. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, uh, you know, like as as a practicing musician, you know, when you are going into your vibe, your zone of music, uh, maybe you know, for a few minutes or so, who would be those artists who, about whom you would be thinking when you're just closing your eyes and you're just doing your thing? Uh, who are those inspirations? and those role models whom you think while you are setting your vibe setting your sound honestly it's been so many people that i kind of get lost <laughs> in terms of because it's like every second is changing uh, because of uh, i mean you know if you want to be original i mean people do ask me how to sound original and sound like you it's a lot to do with how many musicians you listen to if you listen to one guy you would actually sound like him mostly but if you listen to thousand other guys you'll pick up everything from all of them something or the other and you will be something like a mix of all that and you which will be very different than someone who's idolizing only one person so that way it's so difficult to say because it's changing every second i mean i i remember me and my dad used to watch um uh, a lot of drum lesson videos back in the days on cassette like you know with, with, you put it on the uh thing and uh 
yeah i don't know every night we had different uh, drum lesson videos we used to watch i mean watching dev vehicle videos for so long and then actually finally meeting him and then uh, him being a part of my album it's, that whole journey is amazing and then yeah i mean watched a lot of um, uh paul gilbert videos uh, where marco was playing marco minimin and one of my favorite song from that album was terrified and then watching marco play that and then actually playing with marco when we were touring so again you know, wow. so there are so many inspirations and it's just like overwhelming to be honest what are some of those things that you would like to envision you know to achieve in the near future in your musical career or basically to basically to say it's something that we all as listeners can expect yeah okay so that would be some of the albums which i'm working on uh i have my first album which came out in 2015 from germany uh, acoustic album called the opening act and after that i actually couldn't come out come out with an album yet so now i have uh an electric album which i'm working on for at least 5 years now so i hope that comes out soon but it's me doing everything even with the video edits and uh, i mean the entire thing so under my control so trying to get it done as soon as possible that's there then um, a second acoustic album before i again go for another guitar night tour in germany which is uh, like some 28 gigs in 28 days so i have to write another album for that and uh, now i'm writing one album with anna and uh, that's going to be a violin and guitar duo and also writing an album with my dad um um uh, yeah so a lot of things happening and that's the reason why he's here still and i'm not letting him go back to calcutta <laughs> before finishing the project so yeah uh, these are some of the things happening but if you ask me what i actually want to do or want to achieve it's just me trying to play better music i mean you know other than work doing albums and everything is a part of it but every day every moment i just feel like i wish i could play better so that's to be honest that's that's what i really want to do because i'm and also getting um uh, getting to watch so many amazing musicians on social media these days i'm getting so inspired like Absolutely. every moment you go instagram and then you check all these guitar players and uh, musicians in general It's so inspiring so inspiring it's so important to listen to someone while playing and not only yourself then you'll sound better than um you know better i mean because i remember there was one such situation where uh, i had my amps on stage and my uh, amps were really loud and i actually couldn't hear anyone else i mean it was because of the a uh, tone you don't deliberately make yourself loud as such but then you know to get that right tone from the amps uh, the tubes getting heated up and everything you get that perfect tone but then you can't hear anyone so that was one suggestion from my dad i remember where you should be uh, in a volume where you can hear everyone because that's the interaction you're doing you're not playing with a backing track so the most important thing is like they listening to you and you listening to them and uh, you should not be a guitarist on stage you should be a producer on stage and listen to it overall so that you know how good it sounds otherwise it doesn't make sense absolutely the advice is like that you know and then my dad just uh pulling my leg all the time about everything <laughs> about music and then how knowledgeable he is um and any chord you ask he'll be just able to tell you everything right in the sequence so all these things I st- i'm still learning from him every moment i can and uh, yeah yeah advices are in the air absolutely right you know yeah <laughs> yeah you know rhythm on that on that brilliant and such an energetic note Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode and it was such a great moment to connect with you. Thank you so much. Thank you completely. I mean, I uh, had a good time. Really appreciate and uh, my pleasure to be a part of it. Thank you and hope to see everyone soon uh, in person and uh, good wishes to everyone. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. So much. See you. Thank you so much you guys for watching this video. I hope you all had a fantastic time listening to this conversation. If you like this video and you'd like to see more such stuff, 
make sure you subscribe to beat curry follow us on our social media the links are in the description below get your daily music updates from www.beatkari.com stay tuned and i will see you all next time